Hello. And it's Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. And you know what Saturday means on Porch Puppy Comics. Saturday is Pickle Barrel Day. And as we said in the cartoon, character said, you don't know what's in the pickle barrel till you're taking the lid off in it. So as we take the lid off the pickle barrel today on the Porch Puppy Comics Saturday, 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 Pickle Barrel, we're starting out this morning with Yusaki Ojimbo. These are classics. These are just reprints of the original Yusagi Ojimbo that Stan Asaki that done this particular issue. Uh, he done all of them, really. He created the character. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, you collect a lot of weird stuff. And uh, I found this one because in this pickle barrel today, you're going to see a whole lot of weird stuff. Uh, you're going to see a lot of dollar books. You're going to see a lot of uh, uh, silver, uh, maybe some Bronze Age, a little of modern. But these are two I'm starting out with today because one, they are uh, independents and they're put out. This one is by IDW. This in here is by Action Labs, Action Verse, and it's featuring Venture. This is issue number one. It's got a Ron Friends cover. This is a variant. And I saw that and I said, man, you know, that's pretty cool. The interior art, eh, not so much. But uh, the story was pretty decent. Pretty decent. This is a decent read. You know, kind of one of those uh, back, back to the old school type collecting. The next two books that I'm bringing out will be Marvel Team Up 100. And an ash can, the Avenger. These is from the 19, late 50s, early 60s. They re tried to revive a lot of these characters from the AC comics. The interior of that particular book is black and white. The Avenger, he has no real superpowers to speak of. He's just one of those like pulp characters, you know. Um, you know, he's fighting crime, as it says up there. Crimes of murder and terrorism must be avenged, the Avenger. You know, so, I mean, it's it's a nice book. It's a good read. I mean, it, it that I could tell, it had no cursing in it or nothing to that, you know, that degree. It was just a down-home book. I believe, you know, like I said, if I, if I can't collect it, my kids can't collect it. So, uh, I, I would give that to my kids to read. I believe he would enjoy it. Okay, and the Spider-Man is uh, the 100th issue. Uh, the cover, as you can tell. It is done by Frank Miller. I can't remember if the interior art was done by Frank Miller or not, but it's still the uh, 100th issue. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a decent book from what I remember of it. And uh, I just, like I said, if I run across things that interest me, I'll just go ahead and pick them up. These next books that are coming up is a run of Supergirl. These were come out in the early 2000s uh, volume. I don't know if it's volume two or volume three. But anyway, uh, I'm trying to put this set together, not the entire set, but at least from 60 up. Because when it started, where it got my attention is with the two Supergirls, where it picked up my attention. And, uh, you know, the one Supergirl, the one that looks like well, both of them in the miniskirt, but the one with the white top with the S on it. Is the one that they usually have in the uh, in the Justice League Internationals and the Justice League uh, cartoons and different things. So I was wanting to see what they was going to do with her. Because you can see the Spectre is in this one, another character that I like. Uh, the next two issues, that's issue 76 and 78. The next two issues is 79 and 80, which 80 being the last issue of that particular book. 79 has got that iconic Crisis on Infinite Earth cover where Superman is holding Supergirl. And uh, I was looking at the, the people that's standing behind her. Not as many people standing in the background with this cover as it was with the George Perez cover on Crisis on Infinite Earth 7. But uh, I counted at least three to four variations of Batman, three to four variations of Superman, 
and uh, so on and so forth. But I mean, you know, it's uh, this was a good storyline. It's been a while since I've read it, but uh, if I can piece the rest of them together down the road, you know, 60 up to this 80 again, uh, I'd like to pick them up. I saw where somebody was trying to sell the whole run on eBay, uh, but it was one of them where you pick type things. And I'm like, oh, no, they was asking too much. It was too much for the porch puppy. Next books we got up are Human Torch number seven. That book came out in the 70s, uh, reprinting some old stories of Human Torch. And uh, this one, he's fighting Submariner. I've always liked that cover. I believe a friend of ours back in the day actually drew that cover. Uh, and I mean, it was back in the day, but he drew that cover and I, I always thought it was cool. I've seen it, figured I'd pick it up. The next books that'll be coming after these, you've got Terrifics, number five. Now, I just seen a guy that just uh, showed he picked up another Terrifics, number one. I do believe I have one in my collection. This was during the uh, New Age of Heroes. This was after the, um, oh, what was it called? Uh, Dark something. DC put on another one of those uh, events. It's hard to keep up with them. You need a scorecard to keep up with all these different events. But this one here, to me, seemed like it yielded some pretty good fruit. Uh, they came out with the Terrifics. They came out with uh, Damage, which hopefully I'll do a setup on them as far as sets that was completed. Uh, damage, which uh, Damage this particular time around was their version of the Hulk that was spawned out of this uh, New Age of Heroes. The Terrifics were another, they was basically mirroring Marvel because these group here is almost like the Fantastic Four. You got your super smart guy. Uh, you got the elemental guy, which is supposed to be Thing. You got the girl, I can't remember what her powers was. And then... Uh, then you've got Plastic Man that's in the mix somewhere or another. But anyway, it's still a good book. They came out with several others. You know, they had a Brimstone that was supposed to have been uh, uh, their version of uh, Ghost Rider. Uh, they had uh, the Challengers of the Unknown. They had uh, uh, tales, some of the unexpected, like, uh, and it was something like almost trying to mirror the X-Men uh, but those didn't go too long, didn't last too long. But these particular ones, they came out with one called Sideways. And uh, he was supposed to be almost, he could teleport. And he was almost like uh, Spider-Man. He was a young man. Those books were good. There's another one called The Silencer, which she was a female version of The Punisher. But whenever you came into her presence, when she was after you, there was nothing going on. It was almost like a white noise. You couldn't hear nothing. You couldn't hear a thing until it basically it was too late. Uh, Terrifics, number six. Number seven. These are dollar books, y'all. As you can see on the cover, what they're dealing with. Here's another character that was uh, Tom Strong. Uh, couldn't really take it at first, but he's almost like a combination of, of Doc Samson, uh, excuse me, Doc Savage, and uh, it's modern day version, but it, it, it's it's a good character. It's a good character. I might try to look into seeing what his books look like, maybe. Terrifics number eight and number nine. Okay, and that's all I have of those for the time being. Uh, according to what the guy was saying, uh, that there is, uh, they have set it up to where they've been optioned for a TV show or something or other. I'm not one of those type of people that, you know, jump on that bandwagon if it's been optioned or not. If not, I'll be running around all over the place trying to find this, that, and other thing. I just like to hunt. I like to go and hunt. I like to look for the books. I like to find something new. And when I mean new, it could be something old from the 80s or the 90s, even the 70s that I might not even thought about looking or reading and then pick it up because there's just nothing really out there to me. There's nothing really out there new that I'm just really interested in me, you know, and uh, nothing that I can run up the flagpole and salute, you know, so, but we're going to move on, y'all. These, it took me a while to put these together. Marvel Fanfare, number one, two, three, and four. Here's one and two. Is dealing with this Michael Golden art. Uh, Spider-Man is in, and the X-Men, or a few of the X-Men, are in the, uh, 
in the Savage Land. And these particular storylines on these books were terrific. Here's three and four. The covers were nice. You know, these came out in the 80s. And uh, it took me a while to get them all together. Some I might have found in the dollar boxes. I think issue one, I think I had to order off of eBay, but it only cost me five bucks. I could have dealt with that. So uh, the next book's coming up, y'all. On our Pickle Barrel Saturday is two Batman. Batman 688 and Batman Detective Comics 817. These I had traded for. As you can tell, they still have the uh, stickers on them uh, of what he wanted for them. Because, you know, when you're trading, I don't mind trading, you know, if I can get a book, you know. And these covers on these books are fantastic. You know, the storyline, even on that Batman Reborn, was a good storyline. It's hard to find a real good Batman story anymore that you really want to get into and enjoy. So let's see what else we got floating around here, y'all. In the pickle barrel, what else we got in here? Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Here we go. We have Moon Knight, Fist of Kushnu. I think I pronounced that right. If I didn't, you all know what it is. Number one and Flash 161. I told you we're going to have a mix going on. And these books here are nice. I've always, again, liked Moon Knight. This iteration of them wasn't bad. The 80s run, and then here in the late 90s, and then in the 2000s was real good. Mid-2000s, I didn't really care for with the suit and all this other kind of stuff. You know, just keep it simple for me. I That that's, that's makes it just as simple and I enjoy that. I enjoy that. You know, comic books are supposed to be a way of escaping. You know, you deal with everyday life. You deal with everything that's going on in the natural. So when you collect, you know, especially for those of us that draw and different things, when you collect, you collect them for the fun. You want to you wanna have the fun. You want to see, you know, it's it's no gray matter there. You know, it's good versus evil, you know. And you go up there and you're looking for, you're rooting for your heroes. I had a friend of mine, Brother Arthur, that he would he would root for the villains. He said he just wanted to give them a little love, he said. But um, he had his heroes that he, he also liked as well. The next books, as I move those out of the way coming up, is Giant Superman 239 and Batman 194. There we go. The Batman 194 is dealing with the Blockbuster. Thought I had come across the first appearance of the Blockbuster, but the first appearance of the Blockbuster in Batman, he didn't even appear on the cover. But they didn't had several iterations of the Blockbuster down through the years. But I uh, always thought it was an interesting character. Weird, he didn't get a whole lot of play. I think they killed one and invented two more. But anyway, I saw this one, had to pick it up. This uh, bat, this Superman, the giant size, or the giant, I call it, uh, liked it. It's, it's got three or four stories in it. Uh, Superman Showdown with Lex Luthor, Titano, the super ape, uh, the fantastic fight with Hercules. <laughs> that, that was hilarious. Uh, and, and, of course, they got the little specials that they have in there, bonus specials and different things. But the books, they, you know, the Batman is a little rough. It's It's got some creases and spine wear and, uh, you know, here and there. But it's still, again, it's a, uh, it's a book that I can, I can it, it'll sit in my collection. You know, I mean, uh, unless I see something else and it'll go in with a trade or something. And, you know, or maybe I get a chance to upgrade. Uh, the Superman, it's real nice. I like it real well. Oh, my goodness. Let's move on. Marvel Premiere featuring Iron Fist and The Shadow. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The Shadow knows. Great book. Great art. Always love this cover of The Shadow. You know, and um, I guess in an old-fashioned way, that's the reason I like the older you know, kind of simplistic books, you know, you 
Not saying that ain't you don't you know need to have a book or comic that you can put a lot of thought process into, but it's just a book that you you know you want to just sit down and enjoy the comics, enjoy the stories, you know. And uh, a lot of these pulp heroes are making a return. You know, uh, Doc Savage has always been one of my other favorite characters. You know, just because of how he is. You know, he, uh, you know, he was a. a Supreme, what would they say, an above level athlete. He, uh, he had certain amount of strength because he done honed his body to that, you know, to that peak perfection. Uh, he was a neurosurgeon. He was, uh, I forgot what, how many of one of the smartest men on the earth, you know, and all this and his, uh, you know, the way everything was going with the man in the shadow, same way, you know, uh, this man was Batman before Batman was even thought of. You know, but I like it. It was a good book. They, of course, they've had books where him and Batman have teamed up down the road. You know, of course, Batman didn't like it well because he was using forty fives. That was the uh, the handgun of the period, and uh, what they was using. I think even in the old serials of Batman and Robin, uh, he carried a forty five. Uh, Marvel premiere featuring Iron Fist. Book has got a kind of off color. Uh, don't have a real lot of spine wear. It's got a slight roll. Uh, it's got the little ink, a 7-3 in the S where the Iron Fist is. But this is the first art chore in this book of uh, John Byrne drawing Iron Fist. And uh, y'all know I'm a John Byrne fan. So I had to keep it real, keep it real. Our next book's coming up. Man Bat, y'all. Two issues. One and two. And uh, I don't know why I like Man Bat. I just don't. But anytime I get them, if I run across them, I'll pick them up. If I even run across another set and it's decent, or I get it in trade, I'll pick it up. But I'll have something I'll be showing y'all here before too long. And... Uh, <laughs> Well, let's just say we're gonna we're gonna hold off on that. You'll see it down the road, Lord bless. Our next two books will be Iron Man 100 and Marvel Team Up number 19. What is the significance of Marvel Team Up number 19? The significance for that is it's the first appearance of Stegron. Stegron. There you go. Stegron, the dinosaur man. Uh, when I found out he made his first appearance in this, his a second appearance is in Marvel Team Up number 20, which I'm looking for. I've seen it, but it wasn't in the condition that I wanted it in. And it's he's teaming up with Black Panther, and they're going to go up against this character. He makes his uh, next appearance, his third and fourth appearance in Amazing Spider-Man 165 and 166. Finally found the issue of those that I could deal with and the condition that I can deal with that it didn't, uh, wasn't busting my head for the price. And I thank uh, my buddy Matt Halls from uh, Comics Unlimited during the show. He set me up with a real good deal and I was able to get those books. Been looking for them for years, but I couldn't figure out on the price that would, you know, suit me. Now, don't get me wrong, y'all. This is Porch Puppet Comics. And, uh, but I mean, you know, I got a, I got a line that I just won't cross. And, uh, so, I mean, if I can get them and, and get them for the cheap, I want them on the cheap. The next books we're bringing to you all will be, I started to save these and then bring them out when I brought out everything else, but they may make another return. Black Lightning. Issues one and two. For the start, Black Lightning has always been a character that I liked. I don't think they've done him justice in the CW. We won't talk about that. Eh, we're going to leave that alone. I don't think they've done him any justice. This character here, you know, it seemed like in the 60s and in the 70s, anytime that they come out, with the exception of Falcon, any black character that they brought out had the black <laughs> on top of the name. Whatever he represented, you know, there was, um, was it Black Panther? Then uh, I think even during that particular time after Black Panther, you know, of course, you know, you had Falcon first. 
But then you got Black Panther in the Marvels, and then DC come out in the 70s. Well, excuse me, let me back up, y'all. Let's not forget Power Man, Luke Cage. I've got a whole other issue and a whole other story on that one. But down the road, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. But just dealing with these characters, um, Black Goliath. Uh, let me see, who else was there? Uh, I mean, they had a lot of just, you know, and somebody asked one time I was reading somewhere, why does something have to have black on the top of it to, you know, represent the character? You know, but uh, as the years went on, of course, you know, he changed. Jefferson changed his look. Uh, he got out of the 70s, wide collar, silk shirt type thing. You know, they were still going with this street savvy, they don't like Power Man was. And uh, the character was good. The third issue uh, introduced uh, a gentleman by the name of Tobias Will, which uh, he was DC's version, if you ask me, of the Kingpin. But he looked like a great white whale is what he looked like, Tobias Will. In the CW, he didn't have that look. Okay, the next ones, now, I'm going to tell y'all, we have one and two. I'm on the search, on the hunt for three four, and five. If I'm not mistaken, three is the first appearance again of Tobias Well. Four and five are Superman appearances. If I'm not mistaken, I can't remember if it's Parasite he's fighting or somebody else. I can't remember. But anyway, going in, we have issue six and seven of Black Lightning. These books <laughs> were $1.99 with the exception of the first and second issue. I just brought out the first and second issue out of the out of out of the box to put with these. But these were $1.99. Uh and uh like you said, they don't mean they look good. They still had that good look to them. And uh I like the character. I always did. If I finish up the set, I think it went eleven or twelve issues. And uh, the last two books of this Pickle Barrel will be Black Lightning number eight and Black Lightning number nine. And in this one, in Black in number eight, that's where he's fighting the will. That's Tobias Will right there that he's fighting. And uh, in that one, I don't know what this guy's name is. But anyway, uh, the books were nice. It was a good read. It was something that you could deal with, you know. Um, I guess coming up, we didn't think a whole lot about it. You know, it, like people say nowadays, it was just good to see a representation, you know, um, of just, you know, just different people and, and doing different things. As I told you back uh, several episodes back with the uh, American Eagle and and uh, <laughs> they've got a Spider-Man India, which I've... I, seen it years ago when they first come out with it the story is different i mean it's the same as uh as the original spider-man but it's just got an uh indonesian twist on it uh you know and they're bringing in the other characters and they're bringing in other ethnic groups and that's okay you know but i mean if you're gonna do if you're gonna do it do it right you know do do them justice um you know, I mean, if you're going to do, uh, like, case in point, The White Tiger, another uh, martial artist that I like in the comics. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he's Hispanic. And I think that the young lady that took over for him after he died, she's Hispanic, if I'm not mistaken. And from what I've read of the characters thus far, I mean, it seems like they're doing right. The art, is, the art is good. The storyline is good. You know, and just, you know, just make the books fun. They're supposed to be fun, you know. And uh, when they when they fun, it, it makes it that much more easier to kind of hunt for and collect and pick up. At least it does for some of us old dinosaurs that collect, you know. So as... That is for today on this Saturday, 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 for Porch Puppy Saturday. You know, we thank the Lord again, and we just want you to understand that, look, 
All you got to do is just make Jesus your choice. We sing a song, and this song is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He is the answer. He's the answer for the world today. You know, you got to understand, even as we're collecting comics, you know, you got to find a place for your soul. Your soul, as I said before, has got to go one or two places. You know, in heaven with the angels or to hell with the devils and his demons. You know, a lot of people don't want to hear that type of stuff. And especially in a comic book haul video. But understand, these things need to be said in whatever venue that you're presented. And everything is presented in love. I appreciate those that tune in and look at the books and, and admire the books. And, hey, man, I might want to pick that up. You know, uh, even the little crazy names that I give a, a certain books on certain days. You know, we want you to understand that, you know, we, we're here and we enjoy doing this. And it's fun to me. But first and foremost, I'm still yet praying for the community. There is so much going on. There's so much going on. And just we just thank the Lord that we have an opportunity in which to do this. The Lord has yet blessed us. We have an afforded a freedom that a lot of people just don't have. So, but we can yet thank the Lord for the freedom. We thank the Lord for it. And I thank the Lord for being able to do it. So again, we thank you. It's nice here on the porch. And this is, again, Porch Puppy Comics, where if you cannot run with the big dogs, stay on the porch. Why? Because it's nice on the porch. Like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you'll know when the new videos are coming out. Again, this is Pickle Barrel Saturday. Have a blessed day.